Hi everyone, this is Singing Hills Vet here doing a physical exam demo for you. This is Betty. She's a very good girl. She'll be helping us do the demo. Before the examination, I usually spend a few moments getting acquainted with the patient. I want them to get familiar with my voice. And I, especially with cats, I want them to know that I'm not um, going to make any sudden movements or am out there to um, hurt them. Second, I get an overall impression of the patient's health. I want to stand back and see if the patient's limping, panting, uh, is in pain, if there's any squinting, or if they're just uncomfortable. I think this part is the most important part of the physical exam. Get a thorough patient history. Be your pet's advocate. Be your pet's voice. My patients don't talk to me, so tell me what you think is wrong with your pet. I only get to examine your pet for a few minutes and I sometimes may miss something unless you tell me what you think is wrong. During the oral exam here, I'm looking at the color of the gums. It tells me if the pet is jaundiced, if the pet is anemic. I'm also seeing how quickly the gums refill with blood once I touch it. It's called capillary refill time. During this part of the exam, I'm also trying to detect odors from the mouth. An odor for the mouth may mean an illness or an infection in the mouth. We're also looking for uh, broken teeth, tartar in the mouth, infections in the mouth, any tumors of the mouth, or sometimes we even see foreign bodies in the mouth. Then I feel the gums to see if it's tacky. Being real dry and sticky or tacky sometimes means the pet may be dehydrated. I also look around the mouth to see if the pet is hypersalivating. That sometimes means it's nauseated. Here I'm looking in the eyes to make sure the eyes are bright and open, the pupils are the same size, no eye discharge. Then we usually proceed on to the ears. I like to start from front of the pet to the rear of the pet. In the ears I'm looking for redness of the external ear canal. I'm also looking for debris in the canal. I want to know if there's a history of head shaking or scratching at the ears. And also if, the pain, if there's pain on examination. If there is, usually we go further and look in the ears with an otoscope. With that, I can see if there's swelling, redness, debris, foreign bodies in the ears, infection in the ears. Some pets are actually so painful that they need sedation for this part of the examination. Here, often my clients think I'm just petting their dog or cat, but I'm actually feeling the lymph nodes to see if they are enlarged, to see if they're painful, um, just to make sure they're the right size. And then starting about here, we're doing a little neck exercise. It's called a range of motion test, just to make sure that the pet can do these things. When they can't, it means that their neck may be in pain or their upper back might be in pain, and Betty here is doing great. Now we're listening to the heart and lungs. We want to make sure that we listen to the heart and lungs from all fields, from the right side to the ventral, underside of the pet, and then to the left side of the pet. Here's usually where I turn the patient around and examine the second half. I start by doing a skin examination. Notice I brush the fur backwards. That way I can have a good look at the skin. I'm checking for fleas, flea dirt, redness of the skin, scabs, um, fur loss, and dandruff. Here, what may look like I'm just tickling or petting your dog, I'm actually feeling for umbilical hernias, inguinal hernias, lumps and bumps on mammary glands. I'm lifting each leg up individually to see if we're bearing weight equally on all four limbs. Usually if the pet is favoring a leg, it's easier to lift and I focus on that leg to see if it's painful. On abdominal palpation, we're feeling for pain, enlargement of organs or anything that's abnormal. During the last part of the examination, we usually take a temperature, a temperature of 100 to 102.8. It 
is usually about right for dogs and cats. Sometimes they're a little bit higher than that, maybe up to 103.2 if they're very nervous. But Betty here is definitely a great patient. She was in no way sedated or tranquilized for this demonstration. Very good girl. Look at the happy girl. We're all done. Bye-bye. Hi, I want to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm a licensed veterinarian in the state of California. I'm starting this YouTube channel to let people like you know what might happen behind the scenes at an animal hospital. These videos are not intended for you to diagnose or treat your pets at home. Um, these procedures are to be done under the strict guidance of a veterinarian. If you feel that you have a sick pet, please call your local veterinarian and get your pet diagnosed and treated. I, we hope you enjoy these series of videos. Talk to you soon.